what what brought about the hero code? You know, I think it really kind of came back to make your bed. I mean, I'm always just like you are, Jocko. You know, people are always asking me, you know, uh, you know, kind of give us more lessons, that sort of thing. But but people were asking me, okay, tell me who your heroes are. Um, and, and the hero code, uh, it, it's not about me. I mean, it's through my eyes, but it's about people that I met or encountered along the way. And it is about the qualities that they had. Um, and I actually, when I, I first started it, um, I thought, well, you know, what is a hero? I mean, we, we kind of intuitively know what a hero is, but I, I pulled up the textbook definition, and it was actually pretty good. The textbook definition says a hero is someone we admire for their noble qualities. And I like this idea of their noble qualities. Doesn't mean they're perfect, but they have noble qualities, certainly at a, at a point in time when, when they need them. So the first story is about courage. And Winston Churchill said something like, you know, courage is the most important of all qualities because it guarantees all the rest. So, you know, you're not going to have anything else unless you first have courage. And, and the first story is about Ashley White, who was unfortunately killed in Afghanistan and, and her remarkable courage. But I go through the book with these, these stories of these people that I think had the right qualities, the courage and humility and sacrifice and perseverance and, and this sense of duty. And you read a little bit uh, on the sense of humor. Uh, I mean, frankly, and I, I tell the story about being at UDT 11, but of course, I saw that sense of humor in the hospitals. And this is when it really resonated with me. Back to the, the infantryman who said, you know, you should have seen the other guy. I mean, how many times did I, did I give some guy, you know, a kind of good natured banner and say, man, you look like shit. That was always the standard <laughs> comeback. You should see the other guy. Uh, and of course, that was their way of saying, hey, I may have lost an arm or a leg, but they haven't beaten me. I can still laugh about this. And so, you know, and then the last one is on forgiveness. And you talk about, you know, what missions went south. Well, this is one that went really south on us. Uh, and it was a, uh, we were going after a bad guy in Gardez. Uh, had some soldiers on target. Uh, we thought the bad guy was in the compound. Uh, guys got up on the, on the walls, uh, snipers looking down in. Somebody comes out with an AK-47, he gets shot. Another guy in a doorway picks up an AK-47, the uh, the soldier automatic weapon shoots him, but in shooting him, rounds go through him, and unbeknownst killed a number of women on the other side. And so the, when the action dies down, they get on target. Uh, they can't figure out why the, the women, by the time we get in there, they are bound. And, uh, and so frankly, initially we thought maybe it was honor killing. But of course, we didn't, uh, it sounds crazy, but we just didn't understand at the time that you know, they bound them up so that they, the jaws didn't open and, and other things. And so it took us a while to really understand what was going on. But then what we realized as we did the investigation was, hey, one, the two guys with the AK-47s turned out to be Afghan policemen. And the women were innocent bystanders uh, that we had unfortunately killed. I mean, it was the, it was the worst of all my time. It was the worst, you know, kind of uh, civilian casualty incident um, that I'd seen. And we'd had some bad ones, but none quite as bad as that. And I realized... Hey, yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, it, it's back on me. Uh, so I went down to apologize to the father. And I remember uh, I linked up with some Afghan soldiers and, and one other army guy. And we went into this town in Gardez. And of course, there are hundreds of angry Afghans. Um, but you got an obligation, you know. So I, I sat down in this uh, kind of city hall, for lack of a better term, with about 200 Afghans seated there and uh, and. And I apologized to the father. And I remember before I did it, I, I had talked to my Afghan counterpart, General Salim. And I said, what do I say to this guy? I mean, we killed his sons and, and a daughter. What do you say to a guy like that? And Salim looked at me and he kind of cocked his head and he said, oh, he will forgive you. <laughs> I said, so I don't know. He goes, oh, no, he will, he will forgive you. And I said, well, with all due respect, Salim. And he said, he's a good Muslim. He will forgive you. And uh, he said, look, he said, the thing about forgiveness is it not only relieves your burden, it will relieve his burden as well. It will take away his anger, and it will if he forgives you. And I thought, man, that, that's, that's a stretch. But I got there and sat down with the father, and I apologized to him, and, and I could see the look in his eye, and, uh, and, and they forgave me. And this idea of forgiveness, particularly today, you know, it seems like everybody today gets easily offended. Um, you know, everybody gets slighted and they want to hold on to that anger. They don't want to forgive people 
for whatever that slight was because the anger empowers them to be mad. It empowers them to fight back. And they feel like if they let that anger go, if they forgive that individual, then they don't get to be the person that holds the power. And I think that's just absolutely the wrong way to approach it. You know, I mean, the, the whole thing about forgiveness, I tell the story about there, about the white supremacist Dylan Roof that killed all the people at the, the, the Baptist church. And the families went up uh, one by one and said, I forgive you. I forgive you. And the point was they were not gonna they were not gonna hold on to that anger. They were not gonna kind of bear that burden. Um, so today as we look at society and we we wonder why everybody gets so offended, I mean I, I would offer uh, take the opportunity to to try to forgive the people that offend you. I mean some of them are, are big offenses, some of them are little ones, but uh, I think as a society we can we can do a little better than, than every single slight, every single, you know, misstep somebody takes. You don't have to hold on to that anger. You don't have to fight back. You can forgive people. Oh, well, it takes a lot more strength to forgive someone than it does to hold a grudge. It absolutely does. I, I, I often worry, to worry um, because, you know, sometimes we have whole sections of society or countries or peoples that, that have a grudge. And, you know, I... I look at it as two parts. Like you need one one side needs to say I'm sorry, and right. the other side needs to forgive. Right. And it's very difficult to get two human beings, just just two human beings, to do that. And when you have, you know, a collective lot of grievances from two different opposing sides, we have a hard time right. making that progress. 